I was a shy, quiet girl, taught by my loving parents to be independent and always support your children, taught by Girl Scouts to do a good turn daily and be prepared, taught by the Methodist Church, concerned for society, taught by Vipassana meditation, the practice of loving kindness and equanimity, and taught by working as a nurse in southern Sudan, respect and compassion for people of different cultures. And I have needed every one of these lessons since the day I traveled with my husband, Kendall, and my six-year-old daughter, Kira, to Cambodia at the age of 42 to adopt a second child. We arrived in Phnom Penh in June of 1991 to adopt a four-month-old baby boy. After meeting this chubby boy who had a problem with his eye, I felt strongly he was not the child for our family. We were just not equipped to raise a special needs child. <laughs> a cosmic joke, as it turned out. <laughs> Instead, we were offered a six-week-old baby girl, recently hospitalized with dysentery. We entered a dark, dank hospital room, three babies in cribs. Thin, tiny Rangse lay sleeping peacefully. A smile flashed across her face, and my heart jumped. I knew in that moment that she was our baby. After a course of antibiotics, five weeks of paperwork with the Cambodian and US governments, another week-long hospitalization in Bangkok, we flew home to Whidbey Island, thrilled that she had recovered and gained one pound. Rangse became Raina Emma Hubbard, our little girl. Over the next year, we became very concerned about Raina's lack of motor skills, swallowing problems, pneumonia, and other odd symptoms. Finally, a doctor diagnosed her with profound deafness and, and, and cerebral palsy. Our happy baby would need many hours of physical therapy for her poor motor skills, as, long, as well as an electric wheelchair, braces for her feet, dental surgery, hearing aids, an augmented communication device, and so much more. We were told she would probably never speak or walk. The good news was that she probably had normal intelligence. So we needed to focus on learning sign language and teaching her to connect with the outside world and communicate with them. I was devastated. I was told these early years are the best time for a baby to learn foundational skills. So I realized that Raina's success in life her entire future depended on our ability to get her the support she needed. I now had a real passion. The Toddler Learning Center therapist told me about case managers who could coordinate all the many needs that Raina had. After a few years of searching, I realized that case management was always going to be my job. <laughs> I was constantly overwhelmed. I didn't have a clue what to do. So, being a very practical, hands-on person, I tried to learn from the therapists and teachers who worked with her. Every day, during the two to four hours I'd work with her at home, I would try to imitate their techniques. I'm sure everyone senses it's not easy to be the mother of a disabled child, but perhaps most don't realize that the social isolation that happens for a parent and child. I couldn't stay home or I would go crazy. So I took Raina with me everywhere. It wasn't easy. People seemed to be afraid to talk to us, maybe because they didn't know what to say to me or how to communicate with Raina. And I didn't know what to say to them either or how to tell them how they could interact with Raina, communicate with her, talk to her. I just felt so alone. I longed to be, we, we both longed to be listened to, but it takes a lot of time and patience to talk with Raina. Both of us yearned to feel included and connected to others. Gradually, I conquered my shyness and stepped forward to better advocate for my beautiful daughter. To this day, I still quiver inside and feel sick when I have to talk to the professionals. I tried to be the calm, reasonable person, but upon occasion, I needed to be that pushy mom, that medical and teachers professional that medical and teachers <laughs> dread. <laughs> I 
Once I entered the public school system, once Raina entered the public school system at age three, I spent my days off work transporting her to a deaf education program in Snohomish, observing in the classroom and at physical and speech therapy, taking her to medical and therapy appointments for cochlear implant surgery, learning sign language, and then coming home to hours of homework each evening. I realized that, the, um, that there was no way the school system, the school had the hours in the day to teach her reading, writing, sign language, and more. So, so at one point I realized that um, I needed to bring her back to South Woodby High School. All of the um, therapists, all the administrators and teachers thought I was crazy to take her out of a deaf education program where she was thriving and bring her back to South Whitby where there were sign language interpreters were difficult to find and she had teachers here knew nothing about deaf education. But I had to follow my heart. So Raina entered fourth grade at the intermediate school here. At the intermediate school, um, Rini had volunteered to be her, have her in her fourth grade mainstream class. The first time I met with Rini, she listened carefully and asked questions as I struggled to tell her about Raina's abilities and special needs. At the end of the conversation, she said, I just need you to know that I've never worked with a child like Raina. I replied, I never have either. <laughs> All I ask is that we work together. The ADA law required that the school hire a deaf education teacher to work with Raina part-time. And thus, the wonderful Carol White came into our lives. <laughs> she taught... <laughs> she taught Raina for six years through eighth grade. And we began a great collaborative effort among Carol, Rini, and I. And I learned a most important lesson, how to successfully work with Raina's teachers and therapists. Again, I was in the classroom observing and volunteering. I tried to follow the examples I'd seen at home as we did two to three hours of homework each evening, often sitting near Kira to ask her questions and feeling like we were all in this together. One year, Carol produced a Nutcracker play at school, and Rena had her dream come true. She got to be Clara. <laughs> In the first year, we read 58 short books. Raina's reading and writing improved tremendously. Now she loves to read and write. Over the years, I realized that I taught Raina to read, and this gift has brought the world to her. Social interactions continue to be a challenge, but one year, Raina and I were, and Kira were all in the local production of The Nutcracker, an unforgettable experience that allowed Raina to be on stage and both of us to connect, to connect with many people. Of course, there were always more problems. There were always things that I couldn't change. There were always times when I wondered if I'd done the right thing. So I learned to focus on who and what was working to look for the positive in each moment. More and more often, I was able to rise above my despair and fear of the future. With teamwork as our motto, we kept moving forward without a roadmap, always into the unknown. Raina went off island to Edmonds Woodway High School's excellent deaf and hard of hearing program. The many hours of working with new school and private physical therapists began to pay off as Raina became stronger and gained more control of her body. The daily exercises at home were such a chore. They were so boring and it took all of my willpower not to give up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it was worth it. At eight, it was worth it when at age 16, Raina took three steps independently. 14 months later, she took three steps and stopped, balancing independently, and then took another step. That was unbelievable. Now she's taking a ballet class. I 
I tutored Raina in most subjects, and it took many, many hours to complete all the graduation requirements. I was not always patient and pleasant, but she graduated with an academic diploma, honor courts, and was one of 12 recipients of the Principal's Hall of Fame Award. She says it was the best day of her life. We cried tears of joy for her courage, patience, perseverance, and great success. Our family took a trip to Europe last summer before Raina entered a pre-college program at Edwin's Community College. We toured six cities in three weeks, navigating together the accessibility maze of Europe. I remember that Cambodian baby, tiny as she was, with a dire diagnosis and marveled at how much she had accomplished and how our family had become a great team. I felt that when we worked together, we could do anything. I thought of the many life lessons Raina had taught me. I had learned how to find joy and love in each moment, how to be more patient and never give up, how to let Raina's infectious sense of humor make me laugh, and as she always reminds me, how to use my imagination to envision the future. People often tell me, I don't think I could have done what you did. But I know any one of you could and would have done it. Maybe not in the same way, but when you see such great needs so close, you cannot turn away. You step forward. You find amazing people to help you. You try to take action, and eventually you take a positive action that gives you a glimpse of the future. After that, it's just one foot in front of the next, always into the unknown, with the hope that each step will be, will be the right one. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe wrong. Thank you.